The plot is just a one liner that tells us about what is happening in the novel. Prose. It is not anything related to rhythm, rhyme, nothing like that. It has a fixed grammatical structure. Uh, the theme is the basic idea on which the novel is built upon. It can be romance, it can be love, lust, money, tragedy or anything like that. Dialogues when two or more people talk to each other. Monologue is something wherein only one person will be talking in soliloquy. Hello everyone. Good morning to one and all. Let me introduce myself to you. I am Dr. Shalini, Professor of English, uh, Vidyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence, Mysore. I am here to introduce you to the third sem syllabus of BCom. There goes a great saying, a journey to a thousand miles begins with the first step. So today we are here to take the first step into our journey towards the third semester of BCom. So welcome to you all. So what are we going to learn? What are we going to understand in today's module? I'll just brief you with that. So today we'll be understanding about the syllabus. Okay, so what is prescribed for you in this semester? So that we are going to understand in the syllabus first. Then what is the pattern of evaluation? What is the way in which the questions will be given? What will be the way in which you will be evaluated? So that one we are going to understand. So next comes the pattern of question paper. So what will be there in your question paper? What is it that we have to be ready? That is how do we get exam ready? So that we will be understanding in the pattern of question paper. Apart from that, we'll be also understanding few terms. Okay. So the most important terms that we have to be very familiar with. Okay. So that is the prose. Okay. Then the poetry. Then we have few literary genres to understand. Also, along with that, we'll be learning few elements of a novel. Okay. Since we have to understand a novel in our uh, upcoming uh, sessions, we have to understand the elements of a novel most importantly. Okay. So let's begin. We are all geared, going to be geared up now to take off to the third semester BCom. Okay. So let's begin. So here at first, the syllabus prescribed for you is the unabridged text of the financial expert. Okay. So the financial expert is a novel written by Mr. R. K. Narayan. Okay. One of the greatest authors of India. Okay. So we have the unabridged text. Unabridged is there is no cutting off. There is no uh, censor in any of any part of the lecture. Sorry, any part of the novel. Okay. So the whole text is prescribed for you. So you have to read the whole book. Fine. After that, we have one word answers or one sentence or you can answer in a phrase also. Okay. So we have that. Then we have description of a situation. So there will be a situation given to you wherein you may have to explain it. Okay. In your own words. Fine. Then we have this character sketch. So you have to deliver the readers, the characters. Okay. You have to portray the characters in your own words. Okay, so read the novel, you have to write what and all you have felt about the character. Okay, so at last we have the essay type answers. Essay type answers, it's long answers. Okay, you will have to write maybe one or one and a half page uh, uh, content for this type of questions. Okay, so all together, this is one part of the syllabus. Okay, so unabridged text, that is one part of the syllabus. Okay, so after this, what is what else is there? What else do we have? So we have a language component also. Okay. Under this language component, we have various things. It's but it's completely about grammar. Okay. So language component refers to grammar completely. So here we have to identify the adverbs. Okay. Uh, yes, this is a very interesting uh, part of the uh, what do you say the session you can say. Okay. So here the identification of adverbs. You have to identify the adverbs. And one word substitution based on the text. Okay. So one word substitution based on the text. That means you have to read the text. That is the unabridged text. And from there we will be choosing. We will be giving you questions uh, about one word substitutes. Yes. I will be briefing you about everything. Okay. All of this will be briefed to you in the syllabus session. 
So next we have the construction of sentences with each of the given words. So we will be choosing uh, words from the text and giving it to you. You have to make your own sentences. Okay. Doesn't that sound very easy? Yes, isn't it? So you have to frame your own sentences. Okay. Then we have this active and passive voice. Little cranky. Okay. Active and passive voice. If you understand clearly, it is very easy. It's just like a cake's walk. Okay. So active and passive voice also you will be understanding. At last we have this reading comprehension of an unseen passage. This you have been doing from ages, isn't it? So you have been doing it probably from grade one. You have to read an unseen passage. You have to read some passage which is not known to you. Okay. That is just to test your uh, understanding capacity. Okay. So you'll be reading an unseen passage and you have to answer the questions that are given to you after the text. Okay, it may be you, you may have to answer in one word, you may have to answer in a phrase or you may have to answer in one sentence. Okay, so that's all about the syllabus what we are going to uh, face this year. Okay, so now let us now understand the pattern of evaluation. Okay, after we learn all these, how are we evaluated? What will be the marks that is graded? So here C1 we have that is credit one we have this uh, test or assignment for 10 marks your teacher will be giving you a few questions for 10 marks okay. So next we have the C2 also that also is given by the teacher itself the uh, person from you have already learned. So these two are purely internals okay that is in hands of your teacher. At last this is the question paper that comes from the university and here we have various uh, that is the question paper pattern is slightly different okay here you may have to just answer one or two questions okay or maybe some language component questions you may have to answer for 10 marks but here it is little different so what is it how is this how do we do what do we do over here so that's it so what do we have in c3 okay we have this comprehension questions comprehension questions is like you have to read the text that is the unabridged text you have to read and from that 15 questions will be given okay 15 questions will be given and out of that you have to answer just 10 okay all these 15 questions will be one mark questions okay all these 15 questions will be one mark questions you have to answer it in a word or a phrase or maybe a sentence okay word one word phrase a group of words sentence a complete sentence which gives complete meaning fine this is the first main that you're going to face the second part is the short notes okay short answer type wherein eight questions will be given you have to answer just four okay this may be a character sketch or it may be a, a situation wherein you have to explain okay uh, the university might give you a few questions wherein you have to explain some situation okay so that you have to explain out of eight you just have to choose an answer only four okay and that is for five marks each all together you'll be getting 20 marks fine next uh then we have this essay type questions okay so five questions of 10 marks will be given wherein you have to answer only three five questions will be given you have to answer only three that is each 10 marks okay so it's essay type question as the name says you have to write long answers Okay, you have to write long answers and you may have to write maybe a page or one and a half page. Okay, so it's good that you read the whole novel. Okay, so that gives you a hold over the content wherein you can just play with it. Okay, if you go through the whole content, it becomes like a child's play for you. Okay, so this is about essay type questions. At last we have this language component. Okay, language component, we have it for 20 marks. All together we have it for 20 marks. You'll have questions about adverbs. You'll have questions about active and passive voice. Okay. As I said, the grammar portion will be completely here. Okay. So this is all about the pattern of question paper that you're going to face. Okay. As a whole, English is very easy. Okay. Only thing is you just have to master it. Okay. So that's it. So now let us move further. Okay, we will have to understand few terms that we have to be very much familiar before we start our journey to the session, to the semester. Okay, so what is it? What are the terms that we have to understand? What are the terms that we have to be very familiar with? Okay, let's begin now. Few things I'm going to tell you generally. 
okay few things i'm going to go in particular so first we are going to begin with prose okay prose it is not anything related to rhythm rhyme nothing like that it has a fixed grammatical structure it's a written form okay it has paragraphs in it so all these put together it becomes a prose okay so it like a few examples of prose i can give you like novels short stories uh, essays letters everything whichever you write okay all those come under prose all these come under prose it actually has a fixed grammatical structure there is a defined grammatical structure that is paragraph it can be paragraph uh, it has to be complete sentences so this way there are so many specifications for a prose okay it follows actually natural patterns of speech and communication okay natural pattern in the sense uh, it does not like we are not going to write some imaginary uh, we don't we are not going to put rhyming words and all over here and we are not going to follow any meter nothing like that okay it is going to be naturally written okay like i'm speaking the same way it is written okay so that way then we have a specific grammatical structure as i said and sentences and paragraphs are there as i said earlier it contains sentences and paragraphs okay then we may use author may use uh, the everyday language in order to write a prose okay so when it comes to letters or, or and articles or anything we may use everyday language okay we may have to be professional sometimes so our language might change okay so as and when the situation changes we may have to change our language also okay so that's about the language that we use over here then sentences and thoughts they actually continue across the lines be it a dialogue be it among the paragraphs everywhere the thought flow should be continuous okay so this was all about prose now we move on to poetry so poetry is actually the most beautiful form of literature because it has to the words which we are using there have to be chosen with utmost care the themes what we choose and according to the themes we have to choose the words okay so we have to be very careful when we put across the words so we have to keep in mind so many things when we write poetry okay so those are the things make that poetry great okay so as i said it's the most beautiful form of literature because you can even add tune to it you can make it into a song that's why poetry is great you can say so it tends to be as i said the most beautiful form so let's now understand the four main genres of literature okay so uh, to begin with we'll begin with the poetry as we have seen the poetry fiction non fiction and drama these are the four main genres of literature so to begin with let's begin with poetry poetry is uh, as i uh, said before it's the most beautiful form of literature because you can add tune to it you can turn this into um, a great um, what is a piece of uh, literature okay so poetry actually contains the poems they actually contain stanzas what do you call a poem okay you call something a poem when there are rhyming words in it when there is meter meter what is it okay you're not going to measure it with the meter centimeter or anything uh, meter is nothing but the the number of words which you use in a sentence i mean in a line in a poem okay so it has so many specifications like meter rhyming words rhyme schemes based on rhyming words you mark this rhyme schemes and all okay so there are so many things to learn in poetry so based on those specifications you call a piece of literature poetry okay so then comes the fiction fiction actually we are going we are understanding the imagination of the author okay so that is called as fiction it is not real it is completely the imagination of the author okay we are reading the imagination of the author that is put into words that is called as a fiction fiction contains character setting plot theme all these but it does not contain rhyming words it does not contain uh, any fixed uh, uh, number of words in a sentence nothing like that okay so it just contains a fixed grammatical structure and it is completely imaginary okay that is called as fiction then we have this non fiction it is actually factual okay it is real it is factual it contains lot of things lot of substantiating documents that can be included while the author writes a fiction he has to include all these okay so non fiction has to be factual and it has substantiating documents in order to support the views of the author so that is non fiction at last we have this drama 
the written form of a play is called as a drama it is all set to be presented on the stage it has dialogues it has monologues at times dialogues when two or more people talk to each other monologue is something wherein only one person will be talking in soliloquy okay so we have this drama there wherein it also has some props that have to be used on stage some properties that can be carried suppose somebody is performing a drama on stage which has uh, a story of a king okay so therein uh, we have to include some props like the throne things that are used in the court of a king so all these are used in a drama okay so this is all about the four genres of literature that are very important in order to start a journey to the semester okay so let's now move on to the next one so we'll start with the uh, novel okay so the novel is actually a you can say it's a fictional prose okay novel can be uh, considered as a fictional prose and it contains actually five elements the primary elements okay the five primary elements it contains then first thing we have to consider the predominant thing is the character okay the the character in a novel can be animate or inanimate it can be sometimes inanimate things can have life as per the whims and fancies of the author okay there may be supernatural powers also that can be considered as characters in the novel okay so that is a main thing character can speak the words of the author or the author might support it the author might not support it and make it to grow there are so many kinds of characters that is round character flat character all these we will be understanding the types of characters when we start our journey to the financial expert okay so as of now i'm just talking about general words that you have to be familiar with then the second one we have is the plot the plot is just a one liner that tells us about what is happening in the novel one liner summary summary is actually very lengthy whereas plot can be single okay it can be single line so plot tells us overall what has happened in the novel okay then comes the setting setting is uh, nothing but the place in which the novel takes place it can be a place it can be a confined place like a library a school or something like that or maybe it can be a city also it can be a country also as the novel progresses the setting might change as per the situation suppose one setting can be one uh, a situation or one scene in the novel takes place in a park the other scene in the novel takes place in a library so setting changes okay so that is all about setting where the novel takes place where the situation happens so next comes the style style refers to the writing style of the author okay it refers to the writing style of the author that means how the author writes which language the author uses to write the novel i mean to say i'm not talking about english kannada or anything i am talking about the style with in which he writes the language the words he chooses to write the novel okay it can be very simple words it can be very complicated hi fi words it can be dialects of language what you have uh, what you will be speaking okay so various styles the author may adopt when he is writing the novel so this also we will be understanding when we start our journey to the financial expert okay so the last one we have is the theme the theme is a wonderful uh, what do you say the element what we are talking about okay theme refers to uh, the theme is the basic idea on which the novel is built upon it can be romance it can be love lust money tragedy or anything like that okay so uh, theme actually refers to the emotions of the author it refers to the um, human tendencies that the character is ex experiencing okay so that is all about the theme fine so let us go further now what did we learn about we just learnt about few things over here okay we learnt about the prose we learnt about poetry okay we learnt about few literary genres also we learnt about the elements of novel this is all about the syllabus what we have uh, we have been prescribed for this year okay so i would want you to go through the text and then prepare and come back okay so let us meet again in our next session wherein i'll be speaking about the financial expert okay so see you soon children let's meet again in our next session okay this is shalini signing off let us begin our journey happily to the financial expert see you soon thank you so much bye bye take care